You know, um, I was really surprised when I got the invitation to come back because last year I stood up here and cried through the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, I just cried and it just hit me so hard. And I don't know if you guys understood anything, but if you did, praise God that you did. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Emily, thank you for believing in me and giving me this opportunity to come up and share again. Thank you. Yes. You know, what, we're, what my um, talk is about today, I'm going to share with you, it's through abiding with God, how I have seen the falling fruit of peace in my life. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just a few minutes ago, man, I started getting, like, anxiety. Yeah. And I started getting, like, lightheaded. And I couldn't breathe. And I go, what is going on? So I stood up and I walked to the back. And then I was just like shaking. I was like, I can't do this. And then um, I saw my sister Deidre. So I went and I got her. And I went to the, we went to the back and she prayed for me. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> he prayed. Yes, yes, yes. And, and this is what God has told me this, or taught me is that through all of this, as I'll be speaking about, is where I began before I really knew the Lord. And where I am now is that he has taught me what to do in situations like that so that I can get my peace back when I need it. And he'll do that for all of you as well. Yes, amen. Okay, good. Well, <laughs> um, I'm going to talk a little bit about where I started um, and, you know, kind of set up the stage for what, you know, he did for me. So... About 16 years ago, um, well, this story is about my past 16 years of life, pretty much, you know, about peace and, and, and coming into it. And here's a few memories that I had that really caused or where I had a lot of fear and pain, anxiety, um, you know, just messed up relationships, um, finances, just not, none of my own. It was all out there, belonged to everybody else. And that... Uh, it started out when I was seven years old. I mean, I don't remember anything past that. Um, I mean, happy. But all of a sudden at seven, I started having these horrible nightmares. I mean, they were paralyzing. I was a kid. I remember laying there. I, I could just see, I mean, it was awful. Things coming against me, and I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. I couldn't make a sound. It was awful. And I know that I ended up sleeping in my brothers. I had four brothers. I ended up sleeping with them in their room a lot. And I also slept under my mom and dad's bed. I was so afraid. And the night was just awful. And um, so that lasted a few years. And then um, at 17, I started dating a man that was eight years older than me, who my mom did not like. Okay. <laughs> And uh, we had a son, then we got married, then we had a daughter, and the next 12 years went from good to worse to divorce. Um, in 1982, I went into a deep depression, and um, that's when I got saved. <laughs> Thank God, I know. Um, I didn't even know I was in one, really. It just came so, like, I don't remember that. I remember just all of a sudden I'm looking around, I go, what is going on? So I was channel surfing, I wasn't working or anything, and I ran into TBN, and Jan Crouch led me to the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Um, receiving Jesus woke me up out of that depression, and I was happy again. My eyes were open, started cleaning things up, I just felt new life in me. And um, although that I had accepted Jesus in my heart, I didn't really know him. I think a lot of us have that same story, you know. Um, I didn't know what it meant to be saved. I didn't know what was next. I didn't know what to do. So I still continued kind of living my own, the life I used to, at least mostly I did. And um, I made the same mistakes, same bad choices. I continued to live my life, um, you know, just doing the same old things because I didn't know what to do and I didn't have anyone around me. One major um, thing that happened in my life was that my mom and I never really got along. We never had that relationship. There's always something between us. And I didn't know what it was. And we, we couldn't even talk about personal things like that. So I'd ask family members and stuff, and they didn't know. So I just didn't know what, what it was. In 2005, I got into an accusation slinging. I hate you. I never want to see you again. Fight with my mom and my brother. I sold my home, and I moved to Phoenix. 
And um, on the way, well, even before on the way, I swore that I would never come back to Flagstaff. <laughs> God had different plans. <laughs> Amen. Well, yeah, me too. About a year and a half later, being blessed with taking care of my first precious, sweet grandson, Michael, my daughter, son-in-law, and I bought our own homes. Um, when I moved into my home, being alone, again, you know, um, hadn't been alone for a while, all of the past hurts, fears, the pains, the unforgiveness, the, the offenses, that deep, dark roots that started coming up. And I saw that happen in my mom, but I wasn't seeing it happening in me. And um, I just, you know, I too had grown up in church, practically born in church. There every Sunday, always, I mean, always in church. But, and we also had a Bible, you know, those big family Bibles on the coffee table, <laughs> which never got read, you know. And uh, even at church, we didn't read the Bible. We sat there and we listened to sermons. We had little missalettes that we followed. And, but nothing really deep was taught to me, you know, to any of us. And, you know, feeling alone and lost, you need to have, you tend to have like blind spots, blind spots, <laughs> shortness of vision. And seeing only what's happening to you, you just can't seem to see past that. I worried about everything. I was always wondering, okay, what's coming next? What's going to happen next? You know, it was always going to be something bad, always dreading things. I didn't like where I was. I didn't like who I was. And I didn't know how to change things. It was so discouraging. I, I don't remember ever feeling that discouraged, you know. And um, all I did know was that what I did hear about God, I knew I needed him. I needed him. So I turned to television ministries. <laughs> and I, was, I wasn't working at the time, so I was all day, every day, you know, just with that TV on and, and finding ministries that I felt spoke to me. In that, Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It took hold of me. That was my scripture from then on. So I started seeking God. Proverbs chapters 1 through 4 are God's instructions for life and imparting wisdom and understanding. And that's exactly what I needed and was praying for. So this is where I started writing down and memorizing scriptures, speaking them out loud so they would get into my spirit. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23 instructs, My son, pay attention to my words. Bend your ear to my speech. Don't let them slip from your sight. Guard them in your mind. Some versions say heart, which are the same thing. They are life to those who find them and healing for their entire body. More than anything you guard, protect your mind or heart for life flows from it. Amen. And I'm like, I didn't understand. I go, but you know what? If that's what God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for that. Yes. So this is where my life took a right turn, okay? And I deci and, uh, decided to do what these scriptures were telling me. I kept watching and praying, taking notes, reading the scriptures that the ministers were talking about. I'd go back to the Bible and I'd read them and follow up on them. God began changing me, challenging me to face my past, the past that I was running away from when I left Flagstaff. And he um, challenged me to do some very difficult things. Forgiving. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and asking for forgiveness. Man, that was hard. You know, this was the hardest thing I ever had to do. But I tell you what, it was so liberating. <laughs> was, you know, pouring myself out to him, I was able to do that. I was so mad. I used to argue with God. I would just tell him all kinds of stuff and why this and that. I was pouring myself out, and that's what he wanted me to do. You know, and it was so beautiful because he started pouring himself into me. Yes. It was beautiful. Yeah. So I started to, I felt his love and I wanted more. I got hungry for him. Then the Lord led me to my first Christian Bible church in Phoenix where I was at in Mesa. And that's where I got discipled. I served on a past, uh, pastor's ministry team. I was baptized for the first time as an adult. All right. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
speaking in tongues, amen, and I began falling in love with Jesus, yeah. with, with Jesus, like I heard about him, but now I was knowing him, like praise yeah. God. Then I read Hebrews 4, 12, and showed me that the word of God, this is my kind of how I see it, the word of God is spirit and life, the sharpest two-edged sword of the spirit that defines and makes distinctions between the physical earthly realm and the spiritual heavenly realm. And it's our weapon to persevere against and disarm the spiritual forces of darkness, to change things in our lives and in the earth, just as God has given us the dominion and the authority to do so. And that's in Genesis 127 and Luke 10, 19. I realized I needed to change my life from living a physical, earthly lifestyle to a spiritual, um, earth, heavenly one. Mm. Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. It's not the things you change. You can't change anything or do anything yeah. until this is renewed. And that's what the word does. It washes you. You get washed with the, with the word. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah. I have a plaque, a wall plaque that says, faith begins where the will of God is known. Wow. Isn't that true? You have to know God. You have to know what he says. You know, otherwise you're just still in your own understanding. And Proverbs says, don't lean on your own understanding. Yes. yes. Well, since I began my Matthew 6:33 journey of seeking him, I have never stopped. And I'm still seeking him. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I know you all are, too, because you're here. Praise yeah. God. Everything started to make sense to me. I had hope again. I could see that God already knew everything about me and had already made provisions to change my life around. God was revealing his character, his heart, his purposes and plans, his thoughts for me. Yeah. I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. I'm like, praise God. That's so awesome. Yeah, and his greatest desire that he revealed to me was... For all of us to dwell with and manifest himself in us, to make us one with him. That's his whole purpose. Ephesians 1 talks about that. He, he tells you right there what his purpose was, to bring us all together, all in one in Christ Jesus, all things in heaven and earth, to be one with him. And that's who we are, born again. You know, brand new spirits, new creation. We need to get that. It's such a beautiful place to be. And um, let's see where I lost my place. <laughs> uh, let's see. So hearing his voice, feeling his love and encouragement, even his disapproval and chastisement convicted me and moved me. I started believing in and trusting him. Yeah. You know, I just like, I had to. Where else was I going to go? Yeah. That's why I turned to him. Jesus spoke in John 14, 27, peace I leave you, my peace, my peace I give you, I give to you not as the world gives, because that's what we were always holding on to, we were always seeking that peace, and, and it was always come and go, off and on, that's not real peace, just like happiness is not joy, yes, he said do not be troubled or be afraid, yes, and I know that, um, one of my sisters here, I'm sorry, spoke about that, you know, like last night, how many times that, you know, he speaks in the Bible about not being afraid. And I started thinking, if God keeps saying that, you know, and the, the one I always remember with Jairus, when Jesus was walking with him to, to raise his daughter from the dead, he didn't know that yet, but then a servant came and told him, you know, to don't bother the master because your daughter's dead. And right away, Jesus turned and he looks at him and he says, do not fear, only believe. Yeah. Only believe. And that's a journey we on, that journey of faith, yeah. to only believe. So what we know in here in our minds, being renewed, can go into our, our heart and our spirit. Well, it's in our spirit, but in our soul to change us. Because you're right. We, we are saved, but our souls are not. They're always being saved. And this is the walk of salvation, is saving our soul. You know, um, Jesus already restored it, but it's still walking out our salvation. It's just something we have to do so that we can change. Yeah. 
This has made me stronger in the Lord, more confident, knowing that he wants the best for me and all of us and our families. He teaches us how to live by his kingdom principles, laws, and instructions, so we will be blessed and give him glory. We all must give him glory. And when we allow doubt, anger, temptations, strife, anxiety, you know, offenses, especially offenses, and unforgiveness, yeah, they mess us up. We can turn to him and ask him to forgive us and to help us, knowing that he will. That's his promise. We have to learn his promises and stand on him. God is faithful and true even when we're not. He is the covenant God. It is not, yes, he made covenant with us, but his covenant stands on him, not on our what we do. He loves us through it all. He already proved that by giving his son. This is God that came down out of heaven. I heard it's, he, he banked her up to heaven, sending Jesus here, our God, lowered himself to come to us, to live with us, to save us, to show us who we were in him and who he was. How can we doubt that? I mean, we saw, you know, he hung on the cross, cursed, beaten, bled, everything for us. You know, he was chastised for our peace. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And um, uh, let's see. Gosh, where was I? <laughs> Praise God, I get off. That's so good. Um, <laughs> I love that. Okay, let's see. Okay, so knowing this has brought so much peace in my life, in my heart, in my mind, and I continue to love him more than ever before, every day. I'm like, oh my God, thank you. This is so good. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Um, consistency in any relationship leads to intimacy. And that's what abiding is all about. Everything that my sister just spoke of earlier and last night, all leading to that abiding. Abiding, dwelling, residing in, remaining in a fixed state in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes, amen. And that's exactly where we all want to be. And you know what? We can be there. We can. Opening, he opens the door and invites us to enter into his perfect peace, that state of quiet and tranquility, soundness of mind and conscience, freedom from all internal commotion, from agitation and disturbance from the passions as of fear, terror, anxiety, and the like. And that's my greatest desire. That's the place I want to be. And I'm getting there. Hallelujah. Yes, and you can too, praise God. Hallelujah. Honoring the Lord with our first fruits of our day, our thanks and gratitude with our hearts, our minds, our worship, making time and room for him creates a hedge of protection the enemy cannot penetrate. Just like he tried doing earlier, I said, oh, no, uh-uh. Come on, sister. I need you to pray for me. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And this way we can have that blessed life that God speaks about in the Bible. Because I used to say, God, my life doesn't look like this. If this is what you're saying and this is what you're promising, why am I not living this life? So that was part of my search, to find out why. And that's what I'm doing now. You know, just allowing the Holy Spirit to lead me to find in his word where he speaks to that. And, what, and, and, and to know what those roots are that need some fertilization, some watering, and <laughs> some helping. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 6. I learned this a long time ago and started, started following this. Be anxious for nothing. He says, for nothing. Really, Lord? For nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, always, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. That's shalom. That is wholeness, that is prosperity, that is nothing missing, nothing broken. Yes. Hallelujah, amen. Which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I like to say that will mount guard and garrison your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When the storm hits and the noise, the lies, threats, doubts, and fears are whirling all around you, Remember that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. 
where nothing contrary to God's ways and will will shake us or move us. This is where I am now. I know this is where a lot of us are. And the rest of us, you will get there. You will get there. Amen. We will be here in Jesus where there is no greater love, joy, or peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.